Hi, welcome to our tutorial series on how to master Google Admin Console. My name is Leon, I work for the company called Cloudwise, the creators of the Cool School platform. We as a company help schools in how to use IT within education. And we would like to share our knowledge and experience within this series on how we help schools set up the Google Admin Console. In a specific video, we will go into more depth on how to manage and create users. We will start in this video to go over the basics, but as this series progresses, we plan on building on the knowledge of our previous videos. So make sure that if there are parts that you don't know yet, to watch those back at a later time. So let's get started. When we arrive at our dashboard, we have a lot of tiles with several functionalities and options. Today we will mainly cover the users tile. When we get to this overview, we will see a list of all the users within our organization, that is within our Google Workspace domain. This is regardless of whether or not they are currently placed in a certain organizational unit. If you'd like to know more about organizational units, structure and organization, we will cover that in a later video. When we see this overview, we see the names of the users, we see their email address, and if we hover over them, we immediately get uh, several options, like resetting their passwords, renaming them, and adding them to a group. But the first thing, obviously, what normally you would want to do is simply create a new user. Then at the top, we see here that we can add a new user, we click it, and we have the options to fill in all these fields. So. I quickly skipped ahead, filled in these fields for you, and then you see that I filled in the name, the surname, and we see what the email address will be. Now this is important because this will be the primary email address. Now if you have multiple domains added to your Google environment, then you can select here which of the domains you would like to use for the primary email address. This will be the address that is used to log in, so it's very important to pick the one that is most logical. In this case, I have picked demo.cloudwise.cool. And then here we can immediately also select the organizational unit we want the user to be placed in. We can click the pencil to simply change this. In this case, I can select one of these and I will go for district B. And given that this is an employee, I will select employees of school A. Then we have several other fields. Now, secondary email address and phone number are mostly important when we try to do recovery options. So when the user themselves have forgotten their passwords, they want to recover the password themselves, then it's very important for them to have a secondary contact option, in this case, secondary email address. Then we have two other options. These have to do with the generation of passwords. Now by default, they will suggest to automatically generate a password, meaning a simply a randomized password will be generated. I can also decide that no, I don't want it to be automatically generated. Instead, I will set a temporary password. Temporary? Well, that really depends on whether or not I leave this slider on, on or not. This will now ask for a password change at the next sign-in. So essentially, I've created a new account if I set a new password, Jonah will log in, but will need to reset their password to something they want to use to ensure that I don't know what password Jonah uses. If I would deselect this, that would mean that any password that I set right now would be the permanent password that this user continues to use unless they themselves or me at a later time as an administrator change it for them. I will set it simply to automatically generate password and then I select add new user. Now the option that we have now is that we can simply copy the password so we can paste it in an email message or maybe to transfer it to Jonah in a different way. We can also choose to email the user sign in info to them and also this uses that secondary email address. So it's very useful to already preset that when we create a new account. You also see that we have more options. For example, to add them to a group immediately, edit the user data further, email the login again, and we can print the login details. When we are done, we simply click on done. 
All right, great. We create an account for Jonah so that they can log in and start working. But there are some details that we still want to add it in their account. There are three different ways to actually find the account and do these changes. Now, one of them is go to the filter here, find, fill in any kind of keyword we want to use to filter on. We can, of course, use the search bar. But we can also go to only view the users from selected organizational units, then select the organizational unit that the account was placed in. And then we see the accounts that are only created in this organizational unit. And then we can click it to select it. If we are on a different page, but we do see the search bar, that might actually be the easiest way to go to a user profile. Simply by filling in the name or their email address and searching, we usually already get the right suggestion for the account. And this way we can access their details and then add them. What you see here now are several of the details regarding this account. So what we see of course is the name, we see the primary email address, whether or not the account has been used. In this case, we can tell Jonah hasn't signed in yet when the account was created. Um, but if Jonah has actually logged in, we can see the last login moment. The organizational unit is displayed here and we can see several options that we can uh, do for this, uh, for this account. To the right, we see other details like the email storage, the drive storage, and how many documents are owned by this user. We also see several other fields that we can use. In this case, user information. Now, user information, we already set some of that, didn't we? We set the alternative email address. Email address work. But um, even though I did not actually set the phone number, you see that there are several other optional fields to add to a user. Now, some of these fields can later be used, for example, to dynamically add certain users to a Google group. More on that in a video specifically talking about Google groups. If we go back to the main page of Jonah, we can also tell whether or not Jonah currently has two-step verification turned on, if there are certain passwords that are set and added to their account for specific applications, if there are certain applications connected to them, and whether or not they have recovery details in their account set up. If they are member of a group, we can see it. If they have certain roles and administrate privileges within the Google Workspace environment, we can see it here or assign them. And also in regards to certain Google services or apps, that they can access and utilize is also something that we could see here. We have managed devices. If, for example, Jonah has their account um, signed in on a phone or maybe uh, another device, and we have set within our policies that we also manage those devices, they will also show up here. Finally, we can see which licenses are currently in use by Jonah what the bill would be for this individual user, and which shared drives they currently have access to. All right, so as every admin knows, just about the main question that we'll ask to them is, uh, can you please reset my password? And we say, sure, of course we can. Now, as I uh, mentioned before, it may actually save you a lot of time if you have set the recovery information so that they can recover their passwords themselves. But obviously, people will still ask you for the resetting of their passwords. If we have their account details in front of us like we have currently, then we have the reset password option. Either, as we did before, we can decide to generate a password automatically, or we can set a temporary one ourselves. Now, in terms of security, it's always better to set a temporary password because then there will be no conflicts of uh, mistrust in whether or not you may have had access to their account at the later stage. Then we have something else. Maybe a employee has a name change or maybe the email address that was once generated needs to change. Now, both those things can be edited on the rename user. Um, this is something that we sometimes hear confusion about because we can both change the name and primary email address under that button. So that's good to know. 
We can alter anything here. We can also change the main domain that is used for the email address. Very important because that is the email address that is used to log in. And you can also tell that if we change anything here, it may take a while for that to actually be updated, about 10 minutes. If we go back to the main overview, so we go to the users page, and I'll quickly go to the other side, then you will see here again that list of users. And if I hover over one of them, we can also select reset password immediately from this overview. Now, uh, another thing, of course, is that it is fine to create users one by one. Um, however, as many of you also know, that is something that can be quite costly in terms of how much time you'll spend on it. Instead, what you might want to do is also use the bulk upload function. In this way, you can download a template for a uh, comma-separated file. You can fill that in, fill it with your users, and then upload it once more so that you can create new users or update them if you have made any changes to the comma separated file in the meantime. Now besides this, you may also want to explore any options on how to provision your Google Workspace environment based on maybe your um, management information system where you have all the details of your employees and students already collected. There are certain third party systems that can help you with that and cool for example our product is also capable of helping facilitate this if you are interested in that please check out our website at www.clydewise.cool thank you so much for watching our video on how to manage users within the google admin console in the next video we will upload how you can suspend users delete users what the difference is between them but also how you can recover an account that has been deleted. So do stay tuned. Do you want to learn more after watching this video? Do check out our YouTube channel to watch any of our other videos. Subscribe to make sure that you don't miss anything. And if you want to be notified of any new upload, please don't forget to click on the bell and set your notifications to all messages. We plan to add a new video and upload them every week. So stay tuned for our next topics. If there's anything you would like us to cover, let us know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.